Welcome back to John's Films. Today I get to help somebody who's helped me quite a bit. Sadi Shah is a friend of mine from YouTube who's built a lot of my channel artwork, and he's done a great job. He's been working in Fusion a lot lately, and it took him 14 hours to render three different particle systems that joined together for one Fusion composition. He sent it over to see if it could run any faster on my Threadripper base system with a 2080 Ti, compared to his 1700X with a RX 580 in it. While it's worked faster, I think there's even more things we can do to speed this composition up. So let's take a look today at what we can do to speed up Fusion rendering should we run into trouble. First I'll start by adding a Fusion composition I can add Saadi's great work to. Side runs Gargoyles at Work, which is a pretty cool up-and-coming Resolve and Fusion tutorial channel. Gargoyles at Work doesn't yet have any videos published, but trust me, when this guy gets going, it's going to be non-stop. So you might add it and then get surprised by it in your feed later. I've added Saadi's composition here to my timeline. Saadi was playing with both uh, three-dimensional objects and lighting and render effects. So you're looking at quite a lot going on with particles. Here we can see exactly what he is doing. Basically creating particles through a renderer and then blurring them with highlights, followed by a glow with color corrector around it. And then again with the larger particles now, that are going to be fed in and viewed by this 3D camera system with a glow around them color correction merged into a final color correction which applies then film grain on top and shoots it out to our media out node. Due to all these different renderers, due to the amount of merge of three-dimensional objects, you're looking at some serious pain here. Uh, further, you're keeping track of multiple lighting and multiple cameras. Let's just see how painful this is if I try and run it once through. Yeah. That is bringing pain. Let's see what happens here inside our performance management. Uh, you can see the processor and you can see the GPU. So at this point, the GPU is doing some work. It is possible his RX 580 is hurting him in real-time playback. You see the memory utilization inside the GPU. So he's bound but 8 gigabytes of RAM, whereas I have 11 here with my 2080 Ti. And it's almost consumed all of that it will immediately start to swap off into the shared GPU memory space. This is actually system memory. So there is hope for Saadi yet because he's using an RX 580. It has eight gigabytes of GPU memory. This 2080 Ti has 11. If he were to go to say a Radeon 7, he'd be looking at, I think it's 16. And then if he had money falling out of his pockets and ears, he could buy a Titan RTX, which has 24. So that would at least solve a little bit of the problem in allowing this to feed the processor more data as it's trying to render. Now I'm going to stop that, which you can see because I only have one graphics card in the system at this moment, you can see this has gotten so far into the render and worried about building out this entire scene that the UI or display running on the same graphics card has lagged. This is something you could mitigate a bit by adding another graphics card to your system, and that would allow you to uh, distinguish that graphics card explicitly for display, and then use your other graphics card for 3D rendering only. I have a couple sitting around here, but haven't thrown them in the machine. That would certainly speed this up a touch, as it would free up all the resources on the 2080 Ti to be able to work through this render. Or another way that we could try and speed this up would be to use what's called savers, which effectively means let's pre-render a lot of this stuff and have it available to us for use. You'd have to choose very carefully what you pre-rendered and what you did with it because you wouldn't want to have to go re-render it constantly. However, if you were able to do that, maybe you take off some of these initial renders as savers, and we'll try this in a minute, um, and then reload those items, I think you'd be able to speed this up quite a bit if you really could do it after this renderer here, you'd really start to speed stuff up because you're trying to deal with spotlights, point lights, and cameras. So here you can see I've added two saver nodes, this background.exr and this saver2.exr. This saver node allows you to pre-render using the Fusion menu, Fusion, Render All Savers. And what that does is let me pre-render this, store this as an EXR file on disk, and then I'm able to reload that back in as a finished product frame by frame. That's going to allow me to take a lot of the heat off of the processor, and in turn I'm hoping render everything much faster. You see here it's taking maybe 10 minutes for me to render all the savers, and then I hope when I've only got a render 
this particle system by itself and then merge it in with the color correction in the film grain, it's able to work much faster as a whole. So here we go. I'm able to play through my timeline quite simply while it's still having to render live the middle particle system. You can see here this now makes this workable and the savers really do save my processing so that I can focus on the sections that I want to work on past them. Now with the savers in place, let's see what it does to our render. Jumping in, I've got a standard H.265 graphics card based render. It's 1080p composition. I'll click Start Render, it's better than the overnight render that Sadi was seeing or the multiple hour render I was seeing here on this machine. It took eight seconds. All right, John, so that's great. Most of it's been loaded off of your disk though. See, here, here, very nice. What happens if you start messing around back here? Well, let's do it. We're gonna go crazy. Film green for everybody. Strength, roughness, why not? There we go. I'm gonna change the color of these particles, blow them up to blue somehow. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's got like a blue tinge on it. That's pretty cool. I like that treatment. Okay, so now I will jump back over into my delivery tab and I will start the render again. Now it's got to regenerate a lot more work on the back end of this, but because it's got the loader in place with the saved particle system in the background, I'm able to apply what you can now see as this film grain and a bluish tint to some of these particles just by rendering for what looks like it'll be around, I don't know, 45 seconds. This is a much better result for tailoring this than having to wait and render this day after day after day. 41 seconds, fantastic. Here is that final effect, me messing up Saadi's composition. Well done here, Saad, that looked really good. Well, Saadi, I hope that helps. I really do appreciate your help on this channel. The savers do save quite a lot of time and when you're rendering them individually, it doesn't take as much time as when the entire system has to compile them together. Plus, now we have the benefit of being able to save those items off using them as particle systems in the future that are pre-rendered, only having to change them if we'd like to really mix things up. Thanks for watching, everybody, and thank you for the feedback on the channel. Let me know if there's a topic you're interested in me researching, and do me a favor, like and subscribe so that you can catch more of this content. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.